This is a very unusual question. It's actually testing kind of like two different rules at once. Uh, that's very weird. The SAT doesn't really do that. So um, at least not anymore. It used to much more often. But this seems to be testing the pronouns, right? We have to decide, do we need the singular its or the plural there, right? And then we also have the apostrophes, which in a way are also um, a little bit about singulars and plurals. But notice we have something like be where we don't even have an apostrophe at all. So we should think about an apostrophe and a word like phrase is going to show possession. So does that possess anything? Do we actually need to have an apostrophe at all? And so here we can kind of look at even just that very short part. The phrase's simplicity masks there its complexity, right? So um, we need to have an apostrophe because the simplicity belongs to the phrase, right? Now it's not a physical thing that we can kind of hold in the way we think of possession, but neither is a phrase, right? Phrases aren't physical things either. So it's kind of a characteristic of the phrase. And so there is this belonging, this ownership. So we do need an apostrophe. So all that does for me is get rid of choice B. Right now, I don't know if we're gonna need the plural or the singular phrase. Uh, there are ways of figuring it out based only on the, the choices here. Uh, basically, we need to know how apostrophes work when we have the uh, an S. So uh, choice A is a plural phrase because we have the apostrophe coming after the S. So basically, it's like the word phrases already existed, and then we wanted to make that, that, that word possessive, so we put an apostrophe at the end. So no extra S is necessary because one is already there to kind of make the sound that apostrophes make. So... Um, that's plural, whereas in choice C and D, those are both singular because the S is added along with the apostrophe, right? It was originally the word phrase, singular, and then in order to make it possessive, we had to add the apostrophe and we had to add the letter S, right? So that's there's always going to be an S with apostrophes. It's just whether it was already there and we're just putting the apostrophe or whether we needed to add it along with the apostrophe. And that's how we can tell singulars and plurals. So from this point, it's really just like they need to match because the pronoun is referring to the phrase. And so we need to make sure we're referring back to the same thing we started with. So in choice A, we have the plural phrases being replaced then by the singular pronoun its. So that doesn't make any sense, right? We're going from a plural to a singular, no good. In choice C, we have the opposite, right? We start with a singular phrase and then we are reversing it and going now with a plural for no reason. That's what the word there does. It's a plural, ver uh, plural, plural pronoun, whereas D, solves the problem, right? They're both singular. That's going to be the answer because they both are talking about the same thing, right? A single phrase, and then we're referring to it as it's later, referring back to it. Um, we should have figured that out from context. I didn't read the rest of the sentence, the rest of the passage, but we can. French philosopher René Descartes doubted whether he could prove his own existence. Eventually, he found proof in his famous phrase. It's one phrase. I think, therefore, I am. The phrase's complexity uh, or simplicity, rather, uh, masks its complexity. Only those who exist would be able to ponder their existence. So it's, it's talking about one phrase, right? The rest of the thing. So I didn't go there because I want to show you how if we know the grammar rule, it's okay. We don't really need the context. We The rule is is that strict in this case. Um, but if we had the another option E that gave us phrases like this and then there like this later, those are both plural, so we would need to verify whether we're talking about one phrase or, or, or multiple phrases within the paragraph. But um, regardless, from the start, I thought this was a weird question. It's very unusual for them to combine very different rules into the same question. So uh, maybe they're going to do more of that on future SATs, something to watch out for. But they have not really done that on any of the practice tests in the Blue Book right now. This is what makes this such an odd question, is it seems to be combining two very different rules.